Okay. I got a thought here. This is crazy. And this is kind of just now hitting me. So if you're listening or watching, just know like you're literally getting this straight from the hip. A 32 team playoff. 32 mm-hmm. team playoff. Okay. You play Friday and Saturday, the month of December. So you do away with conference championship weekend. You shorten your season schedule. You front load your season with your conference games. Mm. The highest seeds play the lowest seeds. You set it up like a March Madness bracket. Okay. You play every weekend of December and the first two weekends of January. I think if you had a 32 team tournament, that would. Six weeks, I think, is about what that would need to cover. Five yeah, weeks, five or six five weeks. Or six. Um, and you play Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday until you get to those like, you know, Elite Eight or whatever it mm-hmm. is. And obviously the Elite Eight would be the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, all that, right? Yep. And what you've done now, you're not really playing more games if you're a team that would be going to the national championship in the current format anyways, because you've cut off from your season a little bit right. and you've cut uh uh like I would be willing to sacrifice conference championship weekend if it meant yes, without a December doubt. madness, without you know what doubt. I mean, or or, or or whatever you want to call it. And so now what you've done is you've made all of these bowl games that essentially encompass the Power Five teams. You've made them meaningful, yeah, and. You can still play out your other bowls because I think, what, are we up to like 44 bowl games 44 now? 44 bowls. Something crazy like that. But a lot of those encompass like teams that don't have players that have the option to opt out. Right. So, <laughs> so those bowl games wouldn't be included in a part of this 32-team format. And so you have this 32-team format and you just it's – like, it's like March Madness in December for football. There's a way to do it. Like I said, I'm going straight from the hip right now. Yeah. But – as I'm thinking it through, now you're making all – now the Outback Bowl has some meaning. Now, now you might have to play these games a little earlier, but yeah, that's okay. It's okay. If it's, if it's a tournament, oh, it's oh, going to oh, make some money. People are watching. <laughs> and people are watching. People will go watch. It's going to make some money. And then, and then this whole opt-out conversation, it's no longer – now player season will be over the first weekend of December if they lose. And they will have still played, you know, an 11-game season. Right. Like, let's say you, you cut the regular season down to what it used to be way back in the day where they played 10 regular season games. They play their conference schedule with, like, one, maybe two cupcakes, depending on how it goes. And then, really, if you play your season out well, your first-round games, and then – you could also look at giving certain teams by week yeah. and then you could get even more teams in or you, I mean, there's a way I think you could structure it where you're not just completely, you know, squeezing the rag on the players. You're, you're keeping the amount of games they're playing consistent with what it already is. You might even could cut it down a little bit and you've made every game meaningful. Yeah. And I don't know of one fan that would, Oh, we'd love it. Not, not love, we love the it. whole month of December being like December madness for we football. love it. And then you get crazy. You get matchups you wouldn't normally get. Like I'm being honest. I would have rather seen Ohio state versus Georgia. I would have rather saw that because everyone talks about how elite their deep, which we saw their defense is elite. I wanted to see them against. And this is what I was, I was thinking about it last night. I wanted to, I would have loved to see that game with you had, cause you think Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson both opted out Saturday. I would yeah. I would have loved to see Georgia's defense against three first round wide receivers because Jackson Smith yeah. Enigma is a CJ Stroud might be the first quarterback off the board next year compared to Bryce Young like we we don't know I think we don't know we yeah he's potentially might be a better I would have loved to see that like that's what I was thinking I'm like if the playoff is expanded I potentially get that matchup and I potentially get that matchup at the end of you know. Not in your format, there's no conference championship, but then maybe a 16 player, 16 or 12 team format. I get that after you get your heart stripped out by Bama, and let's see if you can get back up. And maybe that gives Ohio State more of um, they just got thumped on national TV t- two weeks before by Michigan. Maybe they come into that game like, oh no, we deserve because the Ohio State team I saw last night, they are who they are. The defenses, I mean, on Saturday is what they are. But that offense, man, I'm like, I would have loved to see that offense in a playoff format. 
I want to see that video game offense against yeah. supposedly the best defense in college football. Well, and a couple things here. Part of why I'm doing away with the conference championship is because I don't want to see a rematch of a conference championship in the, in national, the national championship. championship. I agree. I, my interest level right now in this Georgia versus Bama is really as watching. low as it could possibly be. Yeah, I'm not really I'll watch it because I'm a fan. You know what I'm saying? I'll have it on. I'll watch it. But my interest level in it is is close to zero. The The, the people who are interested in this are Georgia fans. And Bama fans. That's it. Nobody wanted to see a rematch of this or someone who's just like a diehard SEC. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> and I mean, I'm an SEC fan, but not to the point where like 